Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Habitual Line Crosser, and today uh, I was sent an article from the Eurasian Times, and it's just, it's just awful. Just go ahead and read that that uh, headline there. U.S. patriots incapable of downing KH-47 hypersonic Kinzel missiles. Ukraine's claims bogus. An op-ed. For those of you who don't know what an op-ed is, it's somebody's opinion, and the Eurasian Times should, quite frankly, feel embarrassed that they decided to publish this one, because I'm going to hurt their feelings, as well as uh, Vijander K. Thakur, IAF fighter pilot, retired. Because he may know a lot about being a fighter pilot, but he probably shouldn't have talked about air defense systems, because he has no idea what he's talking about. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, we're going to start out with the background. On May 4th, 2023, the commander of the Ukrainian Air Force, General Mykola Olyshuk, uh, claimed that a Kinzel had been intercepted using Patriot Air Defense System. On 16 May 2023, Ukrainian Air Force spokesman claimed interception of all six Kinzel missiles launched by six uh, MiG-31K fighters. Confoundingly, the spokesperson admitted that one of the Kinzel missiles had damaged a Patriot battery. I'm going to go ahead and leave that because the damage was laughable. I'll be totally honest with you. I don't know how you guys like how the pictures aren't out there yet, but neither here nor there, what was damaged and how little it was damaged. Let me put it to you in perspective. Inside the Patriot system, there's these things called battle shorts. And you can battle short systems, generators, all sorts of different things, right? You can battle short. And what it does is imagine your, your truck, right? When your truck has like a check engine light, it'll go into limp mode. That's the truck trying to protect itself so it doesn't rip itself apart because something is wrong. American systems have these same things that shut them down so that they don't do anything like that. Well, when you battle short something, you tell it to ignore all the safety protocols and keep running no matter what. Well, because these parts of the systems that were damaged, and again, I don't even know if it was an impact. I have no idea if it was debris. It's very limited damage. But because it was damaged so little, they didn't even know it had sustained any damage because the attack happened at night. So later on, they went out to check the system and do everything they had to do, make sure everything was good to go. And they're like, oh, huh. <laughs> it's there's, there's some damage there. Uh, oops. So then they took some pictures, it cost about five grand, and they replaced it in 20 minutes to an hour, and good to go. System is perfectly functional. The joke going around social media is that Ukrainians claim interceptions, however, a Kinzel strikes the ground in the target area. Interception by the ground. That's, there's no facts there, that's entirely his opinion, and not ground in anything. But let's continue. The fact is, oh, I love it. Let's see about these facts. Maneuvering hypersonic Kinzel missile cannot be intercepted with current technology. In the subsequent paragraphs, I will explain. I will firstly, excuse me, I will first explain why the Kinzel is such a formidable target and dwell on the physics uh, to intercept such a target. Ooh, yes, we love physics on this channel. Let's get into it. Kinzel launch sequence. A Russian Air Force MiG-31K aircraft armed with Kinzel missiles, missiles, I don't know why you pluralize it, each one can only carry one, remain airborne and on patrol to the extent possible, unlike in the past when a MiG-31K would get airborne and required to attack a target. Russia's inventory of MiG-31 was earlier limited. Is Vest... I don't know, recently reported there are now more than two dozen MiG-31Ks with the Russian Air Force. Cool. One Patriot system can track up to a hundred tracks at any given time. Folks at home, look, I, maybe I don't have a full understanding of numbers. What is more, 24 or 100? At least where I come from, 100 is more. But I, we'll, we'll, we'll continue. In the past, Ukraine will be alerted to a Kinzel attack merely by observing a MiG-31K take off. Now it faces Kinzel attacks without any warning. That's why you leave your radars on, because early detection allows for seamless intercept. It allows for a safe intercept. It allows for you to protect your asset. That's why you leave your radars on and looking out there. The coordinates and radar image of a target area transmitted to a patrolling MiG-31 over a secure data link. The target data, often obtained through radar imaging satellite, can be relayed by the satellite directly to the MiG-31 through ground control. That's how all smart bombs in existence work. Somebody somewhere gets information about a target location, they pass it to the person on the ground who then forwards it over a secure data link to an aircraft, that aircraft then interprets the information and gets the aircraft or the payload delivery system, which is an aircraft, to the right area to release its payload and attack said target. Congratulations, this guy just described all smart bombs that exist in the world. If you're dropping a bomb that is a glide bomb, you have to be closer to the target than when you launch a guided missile. Congratulations, Smart Bombs 101. Get the mask, cut there, throw in a transition, got to get the comedic zoom. Oh man, why, hello there. Oh no, have I gone this far? You told people before we've become sentient. Shut up, I'm arguing with myself. Your big content is arguing with yourself there, Sonny. That's fair. Okay, so what do you want? 
Whoa, hey, pump the hate brakes there, High Speed. You just look a little tired. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> between content creation, my everyday job, and, uh, you know, long form, short form, lives on streaming, I, it's like having three full time jobs, man. I'm, I'm a little tired. I know you're not a big fan of me coming up with any ideas, but you know exactly what you're supposed to do. No, what? <clears throat> he talks about aircraft all day, but doesn't remember that aerial resupply coffee exists. Oh, yeah. Eh, yeah, I guess I hadn't thought about that. So hop off the computer, go downstairs and get yourself a nice hot cup of joe, so that way you can keep on going. I'll do that right now. <sighs> Don't forget to tell people, man, the link in this video will get them 10% off. That ought to get me going. So, uh, be gone, or whatever. Honestly, I don't know what I'd do without you guys. You'd probably get a full night's sleep. That's fair. The weapons management and targeting system on the MiG-31 uses received targeting data to program the autopilot of the Kinzel. Loads the target's radar image into the missile seeker and computes the launch point of the missile. The air crew then initiates the launch se sequence, which is completely automated. Yes. Arm. Fucking get ready to go. Get shit, like, locked and loaded. Take out safety pins. That's how you arm a smart munition. The end. Why is that such a big deal? This is something we've done for, I don't know, 60 years? This is something the whole developed world has done for 60 years. The Kinjal is, is essentially an Iskander M missile with a shortened version of the Iskander M rocket motor. The MiG-31K launch platform plays the role of the missing length of the rocket motor of the Iskander M missile. Yes, I've said this from day one, it is an air-launched Iskander. That's what the Kinzel is, it's an air-launched Iskander. The end. To launch the Kinzel, the MiG-31 needs to be the speed, altitude, and coordinates where the Iskander M would have been with a similar residual burn time. Once the missile is ready for release, the air crew initiates the launch sequence. The aircraft then flies autonomously to accurately achieve missile launch parameters. Once the parameters are achieved, the aircrew releases the missile. Look, guys, I'm going to be totally honest with you. That sounds like a whole bunch of fancy words, but ultimately what they're doing is what America did in the 1940s. Yes, in the 1940s. So an old, I'm going to go ahead and go back in history here. In the old B-17s and old B-25s and help B-36s and shit like that, the person who had the bomb site, like the old American bomb site, when they got near the target area, the pilots could literally let go of the controls and say, hey, it's your aircraft. And the person with the bomb sight would guide the aircraft where it needed to be from the bomb location and then would drop the bombs from them and then the pilot would take back over. Congratulations. He just described something that America has done for 80 years. Wow. All right. Typically, the missile launch occurs around 20 kilometers in altitude and a speed of Mach 2. 20 kilometers is 65,000 feet in the air. And Mach 2, that's a pretty reasonable speed for, I mean, any kind of combat aircraft, maybe even certain bombing aircraft. That's all reasonable, being at 65,000 feet and Mach 2. But keep in mind, when people reference and say the Kinzel has a range of 2,000 kilometers, that is the range of the missile plus the aircraft carrying it. We don't know what the missile is. We have no idea. That's not public information of how far the Kinzel can reach. The Kinzel plus the aircraft is 2,000 kilometers. So a MiG-31K, let's go ahead and look up the range of a MiG-31K. Okay, so a MiG-31 range with only four missiles is 2,200 kilometers. So let's go ahead and look at this. A Kinzel weighs 9,500 pounds, it's 23 feet long, 47 inches in diameter, and has a 1,000 pound HE warhead on it. So 9,500 pounds, and it has a range of 2,000 kilometers. Without that on there, and four missiles instead, the 31 can go to 2,200 kilometers. So how far can that missile actually reach? By the math I'm looking at here, maybe less than two or 300 kilometers, which for a ballistic missile is kind of laughable at this point. Also keep in mind, if you're at 65,000 feet and traveling at Mach 2, any radar in the area that detects you, that is gonna be a huge fucking red flag. Civilian airliners don't fly at that altitude or speed. Nothing else out there flies at that altitude or speed. So congratulations, as you're nosing up to 65,000 feet and traveling at Mach 2, any radar that sees you immediately knows that thing is getting ready to fire. Congratulations, you just played yourself. Keep in mind, regular combat aircraft just doing patrols don't travel at 65,000 feet. F-15s, 16s, 22s, 35s, they don't just cruise at 65,000 feet. There's no reason for them to be up that high. All right. <clears throat> Upon release, the Kinzel solid propeller rocket motor ignites to propel the missile. The autopilot controls the missile's trajectory using aerodynamic fins. The missile climbs rapidly to the stratosphere boundary to minimize drag resistance. Yes, all ballistic missiles in existence climb to reduce drag resistance and increase their range. That's, that's how a ballistic arc works. 
They either go endoatmospheric, which is inside the atmosphere for shorter range ballistic missiles, or exoatmospheric, like the Kinzel, goes outside the atmosphere to reduce drag. With the gain in flight altitude, aerodynamic fins become ineffective, the missile switches to thrust vector control. Upon reaching the stratosphere boundary, the missile flies horizontally and accelerates to Mach 10. Makes perfect sense. Your fins won't work outside the atmosphere because there's no drag that you can apply to that thing, so you can't use fins, aerodynamic fins, to help guide you, so you have to use thrust vectoring. That's all ballistic missiles that go exoatmospheric, and then accelerates to Mach 10. Okay, that's reasonable. The American Minuteman 3, as it goes exoatmospheric as an intercontinental ballistic missile, goes up to Mach 23. The American Trident missile, as it goes exoatmospheric, does Mach 24. The Russian Sarmat, as it goes exoatmospheric, does Mach 20. This is reasonable. There's nothing putting drag. There's no physics affecting your object when it's up that high. That makes sense. During its entire flight to the target, the missile maneuvers randomly using thrust vector control and later fins to evade missile defense. Okay. Now we're talking about it re-entering the atmosphere, but it is not talked about how it's going to combat the heat on the outside as it's pushing through the, the atmosphere, the drag that is on the outside of that object due to the re-entering the atmosphere, how thick the air is, and how it's going to maneuver, and how few degrees it can actually maneuver because it would rip itself apart. But it doesn't go into any of those, it just says, I'm going to do this, and it just completely negates how physics work. But okay. Arriving in the target area, the missile switches to its active radar homing seeker, it continuously compares the radar image seen by its seeker with the target image loaded in its memory prior to launch. As soon as it detects a match, it maneuvers to strike the target area, arriving within 10 meters or so from the target. That's all guided munitions. That's all. But it doesn't say that it's still moving at Mach 10. It said it achieved Mach 10, but then as it came back down, it wasn't accelerating anymore. There's nothing in there in that little blurb, and it doesn't continue anywhere else of how it's going to combat, combat the physical effects on the outside of that missile. It doesn't say anything about it. But okay, air defense challenge, and they misspelled air defense. They spelled it the European way instead of the American way. Well, whatever. It tells me you don't know what you're talking about there, high speed. To intercept a target successfully, an air defense system must compute the coordinates of an interception point in airspace where the target and the interceptor missile will arrive at the same time. Yes, that is called a predicted intercept point, or a PIP for short. Not to be confused with a GIP, which is a ground impact point. As the system is looking at your, your missile coming at it, it is predicting, number one, if I launch right this second, I should intercept you here. And if I don't, you're going to impact here. And those things can move because that's what radars do. They compute those things. At least an air defense radar does. The interceptor missiles acceleration capabilities, the target missile speed, and the radar's target detection range are critical to a successful interception. That's an absolute fact. All of these things, you play in a game of microseconds when it comes to air defense systems. In all cases, the aiming point is well ahead of the current position along the trajectory of the target missile. Yes. Something moving at potentially Mach 10, something moving at an unclassified Mach 4, the, the pred predicted impact or intercept point is going to be further away from the Mach 10 object than it is from the Mach 4 object. That's okay. That you're telling me what I already know. If the target detection distance is short and the target speed is very high, as would be the case in the Kinzel interception, there may be no possible aiming point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. Check this out, right? So here's how radars work. Your missile moving at Mach 10, that's fast. That's real fast. That's super fast, man. That's super, that's crazy fast. But you know what's faster? Fucking light. Because radars push out and receive radiation and help detect things that are out there. They get information about things that are out there at the speed of fucking light. That's how radars work. So Mach 10 or 300,000 kilometers a second. Literally the fastest measurable thing humanity knows. Or Mach 10. Hmm. The fastest thing we've ever seen or observed or exists in the universe or a Russian missile. I, I tend to believe this one's faster. Okay, so boom, missile flying over, detected. So as soon as it detects your missile and your missile is fi fi uh, flying a parabolic trajectory or a ballistic trajectory, right? Parabolic just means it dropped and came up and ballistic trajectory just means it's, it's just arcing. Okay, that's how those trajectories work. It detects that. A good radar is going to go, well, shit, that thing's going to fall. Where's it going to fall? Well, it's going to fall right here. Okay, so then I need to prepare to shoot it right here. Okay, well, if I fire this missile off of this launcher at this second, I'll have the highest probability of kill on that threat as it re-enters right here. Boom. It's going to automatically start computing these things. Congratulations. You just described how air defense works. That's it. And he's just trying to say, you're not going to have enough time. Kinzel moves at 10 kilometers a second. Patriot's max detectable unclassified range is 100 kilometers. Okay. That's 10 seconds from detection to impact. That's a fucking eternity in air defense. 
In the case of a very early detection, it would be possible to compute the aiming point, but it would be based on the current trajectory of the target missile. The target missile changes trajectory continuously. The aiming point would have to be recomputed ad infinitium, which is a fancy way of saying infinity, but he's an idiot because Kinzel moving fast can't turn very well. Missile moving slower can turn very well. But here's the thing. Closing on the target missile, the inertia of the interceptor missile would rule out accurate, accurate tracking of the target. The missile doesn't track the Kinzel. The radar tracks the Kinzel. Radar look at Kinzel. Radar fire own missile. Radar talk to own missile. Radar watching Kinzel the entire time. Kinzel turn. Radar tell all our missile to turn. Radar relaying this information at the speed of fucking light. It can literally react as fast as you because all good surface to air missiles can turn really, really well because pilots like to evade them. Fuck. Conclusion. Intercepting a maneuvering hyper hypersonic missile during its terminal phase is near impossibility with the current state of technology. No, you have gave me no information and no basis for that kind of claim. You have made this shit up entirely. You said missile fast so you can't hit it. That's the entirety of your entire fucking argument, dude. However, there does exist the possibility of intercepting Kinzel shortly after its release from a MiG-31K as it's climbing in the stratosphere boundary and not maneuvering. No. No. The range doesn't make any sense. Why would we try and intercept? Why would we try and catch up to something as it's climbing into the atmosphere? That is a waste of the large amount, the, the finite amount of fuel that I have inside of my missile. I'm going to wait until it starts coming back down and then I'm going to smoke it. Now, we do have a couple of systems that can engage in the mid-course, THAAD and GMD. THAAD is Terminal High Altitude Area Air Defense, and GMD is Ground Based Mid-Course Defense. Both of those can engage in the mid-course, but usually we don't. However, that would require the air defense system, Patriot in this case, to be placed very close to the launch point of the Kinzel, considering the Kinzel has a range of 2,000 kilometers. No, the Kinzel and the plane together have a range of 2,000 kilometers. Kinzel plus plane have range of 2,000 kilometers. Kinzel on its own have range of question mark because you won't tell us, because we'd probably laugh at you. The chances of Patriot battery being within the 30 kilometer range, range of a Pac-3 interceptor missile of the Kinzel launch point are ruled out. It's not the missiles you have to worry about, homie. It's not. Because remember, those missiles don't gotta catch up to you. They're just meeting you where you're going to be. So you can be as fast as you fucking want. They just have to meet you when you get there. The radar range is what you have to worry about because the longer that radar tracks your target, the more information it has about it and the better it's going to be about beating it. Look, man, I'm gonna tell you guys, this is probably written by somebody who has no experience in the air defense world. They have no idea what they're talking about. I wish the dude all the best. I mean, he is a former Jaguar pilot, and I'm sure he knows a lot about that aircraft. But the Russians are finding out very, very quickly that American air defense systems are not to be fucked with. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna just go, I wanted to point out to you. In an interview published by The Economist on 13 June, 2023, the Patriot operator stated that the Kinzel missiles traveled at approximately 1,240 meters a second, approximately Mach 3.6, which is about one third the maximum speed claimed by Russia. Patriot can tell how fast something is moving? Yes, I can tell a whole fucking lot about a whole fucking lot with that goddamn radar. This is the thing, we overspend on everything. We overspend our asses off on a lot of shit in the military. That radar is a bad bitch. That radar, every penny, makes sense. It would blow your mind to know what that radar can do and what that radar would know about things. That 1,240 meters a second, I guarantee, I guarantee, I guarantee that's accurate. I ain't allowed to give that information away. They probably talked to somebody who worked on the system. I ain't allowed to say what I, how fast I see something moving, but they gave that information away. Can it detect that? Can it tell how fast something is moving? Absolutely. Absolutely and it's detecting it at the speed of light. I'll go ahead and tag this article down in the comments. You can read it if you want to. Honestly, I wouldn't waste your time. Kind of embarrassed by the entire thing. If I was the Eurasian Times, I would be very embarrassed that I allowed this op-ed to be published uh, because it's there's nothing in here to substantiate anything, but I'm sure it's gonna get them to sell some, some clickbait and some, some newspapers. So as always, do not commit to the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing, and I will see you guys right here next time. Don't forget to go to habituallinecrosser.com if you would like to support the channel. Play me out.